لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أسامحتها وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This video was due to be recorded over a year ago now Honestly, this thumbnail was created uh, by a dear brother of mine um, over a year ago Now, due to certain uh, developments I was unable to obviously get this uh, put onto camera even though the script was um, done last year I've obviously updated it over time which is kind of a blessing really because uh, more information come to light uh, which has made uh, the script more interesting but nevertheless we're here now many brothers have contacted me <laughs> over the years saying Haji when is this visiting the rulers uh, video coming out so you know I've said that inshallah it'll be coming soon and I've dragged it for over a year but we're finally here now now as the back and forth with many safe sex subscribers has been ongoing, you know, for near enough two years now. Um, what you'll notice is with these brothers is that there's a consistent pattern, and I've noticed it as well, and many brothers have, of them omitting evidences or positions, interpolations, uh, misquotations, and on top of that, half-baked quotes, distortions, etc, etc. So this has been a constant theme over a year and a half. In May would be, well in 2021 now, so in May uh, this year it will be two years exactly. So a lot's gone on over two years. Now this video will prove and highlight the hypocrisy and I'll explain why. It's going to be a lengthy video just to add that, so whoever's obviously watching, it will be a lengthy video. We notice when it comes to Tabdir, you know, innovations and declaring people innovators, they take the statements of the Salaf as gospel. Because, as I said, we present in context, my chain uh, bid'ah video uh, went into it in, in, in huge detail, you know, misapplying the statements, heavily misapplying them, because there were innovated groups that were emerging during the times of the uh, Salaf, uh, which had a bid'ah where disbelief, uh, you know, was entailed with their beliefs. The of the Salaf were very harsh and stern against those innovators and we don't need to go into the details. I've been reiterating this point for over a year and a half. So what's happened is, is that these statements that the Salaf did say and they were, you know, harsh and, and stern against those uh, heads of in, uh, the heads of the innovators and the group as well, you know, you know, we don't want to go into their names, but we, I've mentioned it probably dozens of times. They take those statements as gospel, meaning don't sit with the people in innovation. The Imams of the Salaf just saying it is enough. So they are harsh with their tabdir, and those statements are taken like gospel and like revelation or like wahi. And then, you know, they apply, oh, you're an innovator. The Salaf said this and the Salaf said that. So we would now ask you, Sincerely and kindly, because I am a, a kind person, that now when we present all of the statements of the Salaf and the Imams of the Salaf, that we also would break it down as to which ruler we are referring to. That will all be explained. But generally speaking, visiting the rulers is caveated with the tyrant rulers. But we'll go into it where this is not just Haji voicing his opinion. Everything will be explained. Everything will be elaborated. So you just need to be patient. But when we provide you evidences from the Salaf as to how they viewed, okay, those reciters and those scholars who visited the rulers and how harsh and how stern they were against the rulers, then we would ask you, well, why don't you take these statements of the Salaf like Revelation the way you do with Tabdir? Because you have to be consistent. Like that one person said, I was just told to follow the Imam of the Salaf. 
you know and we don't want to mention who that individual is because we want to keep this video to an academic reputation not individuals because this is what their central nerve is connected to rulers rebellion critiquing meaning rulers and that would obviously render you an innovator in their eyes that's what their central nerve point is that's what their da'wah and their manhaj is based upon that's what triggers their foundations you see so we want you to be consistent when we present all our evidences then you would realize your game's up and you have been forcing your intolerant methodology down our throats and it's only 2021 literally it's the 2nd of january if not the third it's one in the morning here just to let you know so let's get to this video and let's shake your foundations once again NUS is what we're going to provide first and foremost to show you the gravity of visiting the rulers now we're visiting the rulers as i said it's caveated to the tyrant ruler the unjust ruler the barbaric ruler etc etc so let's present NUS to show you how dangerous it is and then we'll show you the understanding of the salaf which is in relation to this in my hand i have sunan al-tirmidhi okay sunan al-tirmidhi by imam al-tirmidhi so as you can see on screen we've got a narration from ibn abbas that the messenger of allah or the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam call he said man sakana al-badiya jafa that whoever resides in the desert he becomes ignorant and whoever follows the game he becomes heedless and listen to this وَمَنْ أَتَى أَبْوَابَ السُّلْطَانِ And whoever enters or comes to the doors of the rulers, okay, he will suffer a fitna. Okay, he will suffer a fitna. Now what we want to do is, now we presented Nos, clear, that if you come to the doors of the rulers, you will suffer a fitna. The understanding of the Salaf or their stance on scholars, and on reciters that visit the rulers. And as I said before, we will prove it, but it's caveated to the tyrant ruler. I would connect this video to two other videos. As you can see on screen, the second video that will be part of this is called tyrant ruler or just ruler. This will be connected to this. And also, as you can see on screen, we've got another video called Vulam, oppression. So all, because I can't fit it into one video, it'll be too lengthy. So it'll be separated into three different parts. This one, visiting the rulers, according to the Salaf. Number two, tyrant ruler or just ruler. And number three, Zulam. So everything will be so clear. I think January and February will be your worst nightmare. <laughs> Once we get through this. So it's very dangerous. Okay, you will suffer a fit now. No one wants to suffer a fit now. Voluntarily, anyway. Would you go to the gates of the rulers? So let's ease you in gently. Because this video is going to be lengthy. Let's ease you in gently, okay? To show you how the Salaf viewed and their stance on visiting the tyrant rulers, or visiting the rulers generally, but of, as I said before, it's caveated to the tyrant rulers, and we'll prove that. As you can see in my hand, I have Sharhu Usul al I'tiqad al Sunnah wal Jama'ah by Imam Lalakai, okay? Lalakai. So this is 253, okay? 253. And You'll see Athar, okay, from Yunus bin Ubaid. Yunus bin Ubaid. And he said, do not sit with the Sultan. One person of innovation. So let's repeat that back to these uh, Tabdi'is, the ones that love to issue Tabdi'i. Look at what Yunus bin Ubaid said. He said, لا تجالس سلطان. لا تجالس سلطان. Don't sit with the Sultan. Don't sit with the rulers. You see how he equated and how he connected لا تجالس سلطانا Deconnected, don't sit with the rulers with don't sit with the innovators. Okay, so he put the two together. He didn't separate them. So according to Yunus bin Ubaid, sitting with the Sultan is as dangerous as sitting with a person of innovation. Now, you take the statements of the Salaf as gospel. This is a book of creed, by the way, as you love to bang on about. So, now as you can see in my hand, we've got the book al adab al by Ibn Muflah. Okay? By Ibn Muflah. And as you can see on screen, it mentions that Imam Ahmed never used to visit the Khulafa. He never used to visit them. All the leaders. And he used to abstain from writing to them. Listen to this. 
and he used to prohibit his companions from doing this absolutely. And he says that this has been transmitted from his jama'ah. وَكَلَامُهُ فِيهِ مَشْحُورٌ And in this, in this speech is very very famous regarding Imam Ahmed's stance. So we're going to carry on later with more evidence to shock you to your very core. So what do you have to say about that? Huh? What do you have to say about that? That Imam Ahmed used to even hate writing to them. He never used to visit them. He yeah, well, visit these rulers. Who are khulafa, who are ruling by sharia, who were, you know, uh, sending out the futuha to open new lands to Islam. We're talking rulers obviously with their flaws, they were tyrannical, no doubt about it. But Imam Ahmed never used to visit them. No, he used to visit them. He used to visit them. And he used to abstain writing them. Forget even visit them. He never used to even write to them. But what do we see today? Mm, okay, that's a different story altogether. We don't want to really go into that. Now think about this for a second, okay? I have a position like Imam Ahmed, okay? Don't visit the rulers. You used to abstain writing to, to them, etc. That was my position. But imagine me feeling so strongly about this that I even tell my companions, my friends, you know what? You don't even write to them. Mutlaqan. Don't even write to them. That shows he had a strong position against the rulers. Okay? And then he says, what did he say? He says, وَكَلَامُهُ فِيهِ مُشْحُورٌ That this was famous. This is known that Imam Ahmed was, the, was like this. Let me shock you to your core even further. And he mentioned an Athar, as you can see, he mentioned سَأَلْتُ Ahmed and Ibrahim bin Musa al-Harwi. He mentions that, I asked Ahmed about Ibrahim bin Musa al-Harwi. He says that, Ibrahim bin Musa al-Harwi Rajulun wasikhun Man is dirty Fakultu Then I said What is your statement that he is dirty Or indeed he is dirty Then he said Whoever follows the leaders and the judges Fahuwa wasikhun That he is dirty Okay And look what Ibn Mufla says Wa kana hada ra'il jama'atu min as-salaf that this was the opinion of the group of the Salaf. So this opinion from the group of the Salaf that following the leaders and the judges, they are dirty. Who were the scholars that from the Salaf? Because he says, Who were they? Which group of the Salaf used to say that following the rulers and the judges, they're dirty people? Who are they? From amongst them is Suwaid bin Ghafla. Wattawus. Look at this. والنخعي وإبراهيم النخعي وأبو حازم أبو حازم الأعرج if I said his name right والثوري we're going to get to الثوري لا ثوري used to hold that opinion that whoever follows the ruler is dirty who else وفضيل بن عياد فضيل بن عياد used to hold that view وإبن مبارك and we know إبن مبارك was strict on the rulers والداود الطائي and داود الطائي وعبد الله بن إدريس and عبد الله بن إدريس بشر بن حارث الحافي وغيرهم and other than them and then what does Ibn Muhla say and it's preceded that the prop that from the saying of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so what did they use as evidence do you remember the hadith I brought at the start from at tirmidhi and whoever comes to the gates of the rulers is suffer will suffer from fitna that's the hadith you see what I presented at the start وهو محمول على من أتاه لطلب الدنيا that especially this is so connected to the one that comes to request the dunya. Listen to this super salafi madakhila, you box heads. Especially the one that is oppressive and is unjust or is tyrannical. So I bet you didn't teach your box headed crowd this, did you? The box headed salafis, you didn't teach them this. Look how I connected it. I presented the hadith at the start to show you how severe it was. And thereafter, I presented numerous uh, salaf which had negative views and even to the point, what did they say? They are dirty. He's dirty, the ones that visit the rulers. You see that? A man is dirty who follows the rulers and follows the judges. And what did Ibn Mufla say? Especially the ones that are oppressive and are tyrannical. So Ibn Jawzi, we're going to get to his book later, uh, Tilbis Iblis. But he mentions that basically the scholars, obviously the ones who are contracted, the later scholars, okay, who are obviously surrounding uh, the rulers. He mentions a author from Hudayfa. Bin Yaman, who always was the one that was to talk about fitna. And he said, Iyakum wa muwafaq al fitan. He said, Beware of agreeing with fitan. So they said, Wa ma hiya? Like, what is that? He said, The doors of the ruler. Abwab al umara. The doors of the rulers. Then he said, Whoever, one of you that enters upon a emir, a ruler, and you believe in his lies, and then you say, or they say, that it is not, or that person does not have that. 
Okay? Then it states, listen to this, وَقَالَ السَّعِيدِ بِنْ مُسَيْدِ What did he say? He said, if you see a scholar surrounding himself with the rulers, beware of him, for indeed he is a thief. For indeed he is a thief. Okay? Now I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to mention any names contemporarily. But what I'm going to say is this. I, well, I'm just getting started. Believe me, I'm just getting started. What did he say? Beware of him. For in the whole list one. That he is a thief. So this is how the seller viewed. Remember, tyrannical rulers. Okay? This is referring to, as Ibn Mufla says, uh, that this is referring to La Siyama in Kana Waliman Jairan. This is who it's referring to regarding visiting the rulers. The tyrant oppressive rulers. Okay? They were not subservient slaves like you find the slaves of the rulers and the, the scholars of the rulers of today. And I'm not going to mention any names, but you know who I'm referring to. Not just in one particular country, I'm talking generally speaking. But technically speaking, if I said, you know what, those scholars that follow the rulers and follow the judges and the emirs, the dirty, the thieves, what would you say to me? What would you say to me? You say, oh, he's a Kharij, he's an innovator. But you've got the son of saying it themselves. For in the whole list, he's a thief. The one that visits the rulers. He's a thief. If you see someone regularly visiting the rulers, don't want to mention who, but the one who regularly visits the rulers, he's a thief. Okay, let's carry on. And it says here, it says, وَقَالَ well, بَعْدُ salaf That some of the salaf used to say that indeed you would not be afflicted or you would have in your dunya with anything or in their dunya with anything except that they will be afflicted in their religion also. Okay, which is better than that. Okay, which is better than that. So basically anyone that goes visits the rulers, the tyrant, la siyaman, zaliman, jairan. The one that visits the ty ty tyrannical oppressive ruler. But if they do, and like the seller said, they're dirty, they're thieves, many more as well, and everything else, you, they will get the dunya, but with that, they will be also afflicted with their religion. Trust me. I'm got, this, is, this is what the seller used to say. I'm not saying it. Clearly, even what Flair says, uh, salaf. This is what the Salaf used to say. So why wasn't this brought to the people's attention? Tyrant, tyrannical rulers we're talking about. Okay? Good rulers, we'll get to that in the other video. Like I said before, it's going to be split into three different parts. And Ibn Mufla continues on to say, he goes, well, Sultan al -adil. As for the just ruler, okay? For dukhul alayhi, and to enter upon him, and to aid him with his justice, uh, to get close to him. And he says that, uh, that Urwa bin Zubair, and Ibn Shihab, and they, and they basically, their scholars in their era used to basically keep companionship with Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So we'll stop there for a second. So, if you have a ruler similar to like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, for example, or like just say, uh, you know, the Khulafa al Rashidin, you know, and you can include Al Hassan, anhu, or someone like Muawiyah, for example, you know, just rulers, okay? No problem, okay? Enter upon them. No issues whatsoever. No problem. It's regarding the ones la siyama zaliman jairan. It's only the tyrannical rulers, especially if they're tyrannical. But if they're good rulers, no problem. If they're like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Umar bin Zubair, and other scholars from his era used to uh, keep companionship with Umar bin Abdul Aziz, let us, no problem, because he's a just ruler. You aid him with his justice, let us. But what about tyrant rulers? What about rulers you know, who are barbaric? What about rulers who are absolute despots but you try to use prophetic narrations to apply it on them okay and then he mentions that Sha'bi and various other scholars uh, Malik Awza'i uh, Sha'fi'i and other than them used to enter upon the Sultan okay used to enter upon the Sultan and as you can see on screen okay we've got an author here so Ismail who was the son of the sister of Ibn Mubarak he had an argument with Abu Abdullah and he spoke to him about entering upon the Khulafa or the Khalifa. You see this? They're debating, they're having an argument. And فَقَالَ لَهُ Abu Abdullah that Abu Abdullah said يعني Ibn Mubarak I don't come to them, meaning the rulers. I don't come to the rulers. And if I came to them, I would believe them, meaning I would believe in their lies. And I fear uh, that I should believe them. SubhanAllah Al-Azim. So, this is, uh, there's plenty more. This is al adab al Sharia by Ibn Muflah. Plenty more. The whole chapter is full of it. So, Ibn Mubarak basically said, he goes, I don't come to them. You got it? I don't come to these rulers. And he goes, I, you know, because if I come to them, I will believe their lies. And I fear that I'm going to believe their lies. Or something like, along those lines. So, look how some of the Salaf were. 
when it comes to the rulers. This is the same way that how the Salaf were when they dealt with Khuruj. Okay? They weren't, you know, uh, bending on their knees and, and being slaves to these tyrant rulers, even though these were type of rulers who were Khulafa. There was a full Islamic Khilafa involved. You know, where they were spreading Islam and they were ruling by the Sharia. You know, they weren't uh, subservient slaves to their, uh, what we call, the Romans or the Persians or, you know, the Byzantines or, you know, the Khazars or whoever they may be at the time. They were firm. But yet, the Salaf, some of the scholars of the Salaf were like, no way. But at the same time, some scholars were like, no, just, you know, we'll come to them, we'll advise them. They had a different approach, but some were no. So imagine if I was like Ibn Mubarak. Because I'm going to come to them. Dirty, the one that come to the rulers or scholars that follow the rulers, you know. And various others, uh, you know, what they've said about the rulers. Imagine if I was to say something like that or anyone else, for example. You will come down on us like a ton of bricks. I will show you how much of a firm stance, okay, uh, the Imams of the Salaf had in relation to visiting the rulers. Especially, remember, I'm going to keep emphasizing on this point. La siyaman, la siyaman zaliman jairan. Especially if they're tyrannical and they're oppressive or pr oppressive and tyrannical. As you can see on screen, we've got the book Seer A'lamu Nubala by Imam al Dahabi. And he mentions, okay, a story. This prince, this ruler, okay, Khalid bin Ahmed al uh, Dhuhli, uh, uh, he was the prince of Bukhara. He sent a messenger with the message and he says, Bring me the book so that I can hear this from you. So, Imam Bukhari sent him a uh, message back and he said, Ana la udhillu al -ilm. He goes, I do not humiliate knowledge. Wa la ahmiluhu ila abwaab nas Now this abwaab nas there's different variations of abwaab al-salatin. He also mentions that in a different version. But here it says abwaab nas Now this is what he means by the rulers. Okay, he means I don't take it to the rulers. And then Imam al-Bukhari mentioned, he said, So if he has any need, let him come to my masjid or to my home. And if he doesn't like that, then he is a sultan. So let him prevent me from my lessons. Subhanallah azim. So that I may have an excuse in front of Allah on the day of judgment that I did not hold back knowledge. So the narrator said, okay, after, he goes, this was the reason why they had hostility between them. Okay, this was the reason why they had hostility between them. So let me ask you now, imagine... Remember, he has to obey the ruler. Even if he flogs your back or takes your wife. He won't flog any man Bukhari. He just says, bring the books to me. Okay, bring these books so I can learn. Or you can read them to me. To be honest, he had noble intentions. He just wanted to learn. Just you know, bring me your Sahih Bukhari. Yeah, at the time, he wasn't called Sahih Bukhari. And bring me your Tariq al-Khabir. Just read it to me. So, he should obey him, shouldn't he? Imagine if someone, uh, if your master, I don't want to mention his name, said to one of the shiuch, bring me the books and teach. <laughs> the run. They run before he even says bring. And they run there like puppies. You understand? You know, Bukhari won't like you guys. You know, Bukhari's like us. Like, what do you mean? You come here. But is this obeying the rulers? Even if he flogs you back and takes you, what? This is ill. Which is a noble thing. And he goes, no, not a chance. If you want to come, come here. Otherwise, you know, you're the Sultan. If you want, stop me from teaching. Subhanallah al -Azim. Look at that. Heavy, heavy. And I'm just getting started. Just getting started, by the way. This is by Ibn Abdubbar al Maliki. And as you can see on screen, Subhanallah, under the chapter of critiquing the scholar that enters upon the tyrant oppressive ruler, or rather oppressive ruler. So I'll read that again just in case oh, look, I had you mistranslated. It says the chapter of the critiquing the scholar, critiquing the scholar, remember, critiquing the scholar, so behave yourself, peeps, of the ones that enter upon the oppressive Ruler. Look at that, the chapter is already a slap in your face already. So the first thing he does, he presents a hadith, which I presented at the start. Whoever resides in the desert becomes rough or rude. Whoever follows the hunt or the game becomes heedless. And whoever uh, comes to the uh, Sultan gets afflicted with fitna. And as you can see also, it says that Abu Qilaba, okay, Abu Qilaba said that Ya Ayub, he's talking to Ayub, and he says, remember from me three characteristics, okay, remember from me three characteristics, beware of the gates of the rulers, look at that, first, beware of the gates of the rulers, and beware of sitting with the people of desires, 
okay and you know being uh, sort of close to the the marketplaces um etc etc furthermore it mentions and this is from sufyan okay sufyan authority remember i said i'm bringing some statements from sufyan authority do you remember i mentioned that okay listen to this in jahannam there's a valley la yaskunuhu they would not live in it except the reciters who visit the rulers okay reciters that visit the rulers subhanallah al-azim so we'll stop there we want you to be consistent as you take the statements of tabdeer and bidah and everything else take this as well why are you hypocritical for why are you why do you have double standards so in how there's a valley where those who uh will live in it are the ones that uh, are from the reciters that visit the rulers you're going to take that as well i assume yeah correct let's carry on now the author underneath is basically that abdullah ibn mubarak okay who was harsh with the rulers wrote to uh one of these uh scholars okay and he mentions and this is a good line of poetry it states that he says oh you who have made knowledge to be a falcon okay which he seizes the wealth of the poor you have taken the world and its delight with a scheme that does away with religion so you have become a mad one okay after being a cure for the mad one where are your reports from ibn aun and ibn sirin you studied knowledge and its reports and left the doors of the leaders if you say you have been forced into this then that's not how the donkey of knowledge slips into mud subhanallah alazim and the theme of this video will be this how stern harsh how they had nothing positive to say about those who visit the rulers subhanallah alazim and then you have here you know in this day and age you know slaves of the rulers that just basically defend their every move just by criticizing them you're a person of innovation you're a person of desire you guys honestly have got no connection to the salaf you've hijacked the salaf it's just it's just me a talk it's just lip service means nothing okay let's carry on that ibn abdul bad says okay that the worst leaders are the ones that are far from the scholars and the worst scholars are the ones that are close to the rulers subhanallah alazim so this is the book from ibn abdul bad okay we got that one out of the way so as you can see the theme okay the pattern we're going to carry on there's more plenty more and we're going to leave no doubt by the end of this video now in my hand we've got the book by ibn jawzi talbis iblis subhanallah alazim and as you can see on screen it mentions wa min talbis iblis al fuqaha and from the deceptions of iblis upon the scholars is their mixing with the rulers and the kings okay subhanallah alazim wa taraka inkar alayhim ma qudrat ala dhalik and he says that their failure okay or rejection in correcting them when they're able to do so okay and basically they give them allowances when there is no allowances for them in order to attain some worldly benefits and then ibn uh, al jawzi says they are so this produces corruption and this is from three angles awwal the first angle that the ruler is corrupted by it because he would say if i was not correct upon what i am meaning if i if i wasn't correct then that scholar would correct me okay wa kayfa la akun musiban and how can i not be corrected wa huwa ya'kulu min mali and he eats from my wealth subhanallah alazim so you see it's look the ruler or assigning or being with the ruler there's perks and no doubt as the salaf said that the perks are dunyawiya You understand what I mean? So the ruler will think to himself, "Hold on, yeah. If I'm not correct here, then he will correct me, obviously. And he's not correcting me. And on top of that, he's eating my wealth. And secondly, what Thani al Amiu anna hu yaqul, and the, the the common person will say, "La baas bi had al Amir. There is no problem with this ruler. Why? Wala bi malihi and his wealth, wala bi afalihi and his actions. Fa inna fulan al faqi la yubarrahu indahu. That because whatever scholar did not criticize him wa thalithu and the third one al faqihu the the scholar fa innahu yufsidu dinahu bi dhalik and the third is because the scholar becomes corrupted by that and he said wa qad labasa iblis alayhi fi dukhul ala sultan that basically iblis has deceived them to enter upon the rulers by saying to them inna ma nadkhulu li nashfa fi muslim he said that 
He was deceiving by saying, you will just enter to intercede for the benefit of the Muslims. So there you go, Ibn Jawzi in Tilbis. Iblis also shows you how dangerous it is to enter upon the rulers, as we've already proved from the Salaf thus far. And as you can see on screen, we've got the book, Hilyatul Awliya. And he says that Imam Sufyan al says, whoever made dua for an oppressor to remain has loved that Allah be disobeyed. Okay, that's the point. And as you can see on screen, we've got the book, uh, Shu'b al-Iman by Bayhaqi. And he mentions the same author. Okay, uh, similar by Hassan al-Basri, and he says, whoever makes dua for an oppressor to remain, he has loved that Allah be disobeyed, okay, on the earth. Okay, so the same uh, narration. Now let's shock you to your core and show you those who defend the rulers with their tongues. If the Salaf were alive today, they will be rejected, outcasted, and various other uh, you know, issues that they would have with them as well. As you can see on screen. And basically he mentions that when the, uh, when Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed was in, in prison, one of the prison guards asked him, okay, he says, فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ الْحَدِيثُ الَّذِي رُوِيَ فِي الظَّلَمَةِ وَأَعْوَانِهِمْ صَحِيحٌ He says that, you know the, the hadith that mentioned uh, the oppressors and those who aid them are they authentic now which hadith is this as you can see on screen we've got the hadith of uh, Sunan al-Tirmidhi okay and he mentions obviously about there'll come a time uh, that uh, there will be umara and whoever enters upon them and believes in their lies etc etc as you can see and and obviously um, you know trust uh, and aids them in their oppression then he is not from me and I am not from him uh, and they will not drink from the hold, etc. So that's the hadith. Uh, and so just getting back to uh, this particular um, story. So then Imam Ahmed said, Naam, yes you are. Fa'ana minhum, am I from them? Okay, so that hadith is connect in connection to whoever aids the oppressors. Listen to this. So the Imam Ahmed said to him, he says, the one that aids the oppressor is the one that cuts your hair. وَيَخْسِلُ ثَوْبَكَ And cleans your clothes or washes your clothes. وَيُسْلِحُ طعامك And basically prepares your food. Okay? Or gives you food. وَيَبِيعُ وَيَشْتَرِ مِنْكَ And buys and sells from you. Okay? You are from the oppressors themselves. Subhanallah. You see this? Imam Ahmed, when he was asked by the prison guard, he said, look, the hadith in Sunan al tirmidhi which we presented, that mentions that, you know, uh, there'll be rulers, whoever aids them in their oppression. Uh, have you heard about rulers, whoever aids them in their oppression, etc. You know, and believed in their lies, etc. He's not from me. So he asked Imam Ahmed, go, look, you know the hadith regarding aiding the oppressors? You know, is it true? He said, yes. He goes, am I from them? So he, Imam Ahmed, subhanAllah, said, look, the ones that, what's it called, uh, uh, help you or feed you or cut your hair, or wash your clothes and buy stuff from you, they're aiding the oppressor, meaning they're aiding you. But you, you're the oppressor yourself. You're from them. Now imagine you've got fanboys, students of knowledge, scholars who defend tyrant rulers as per the uh, statement, which mentioned whoever makes dua for a violin to remain has loved or wished that Allah be disobeyed on the earth. So this prison guard is not just aiding the oppressor. He is the oppressor. So imagine who defend tyrant rulers with their tongues. You're not aiding the oppressors, you are from the oppressors. Okay? All those noble scholars that are currently lavishing in the prisons. Similar to Imam Ahmed. Okay? Similar to Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Similar to Ibn Qayyim. Similar to various ulama that were uh, unjustly arrested. Okay? Like the ones we're seeing today. But no, they misguided. The same excuses they had. Okay, those rulers had for the, the noble scholars of Ibn Taymiyyah, etc. I'm not comparing them to them, but I'm saying, look, the same cycle, isn't it? So you guys, the Salaf were around today. Let me tell you, they'll disown you. I'm telling you now. I am certain, I'm confident, I'm sure that if the major imam of the Salaf were alive today, they were here with us today, they would disown them, or disown themselves from you. They'd say, you know what, you guys, get out of here. Get away from me, you... Slaves of the rulers. And as you can see on screen, we got the book Kitab uh, al furu by Ibn Muflah. And he mentions the same story. Okay, so this story is also mentioned by Ibn Muflah. Okay. Now what we're going to do, okay, we're going to present a statement from Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah regarding this matter. Subhanallah al-Azim. So as you can see on screen, uh, we've got the book Majmu' al-Fatawa. Okay, we've got the book Majmu' al-Fatawa. And it mentions that Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam, rahmatullah alayhi, says, 
وقد قال غير واحد من السلف that more than one uh, imam from the salaf said أعوان ظلم من أعانه ولو أنه لاق لهم دواء أو بر لهم قلما said that those the ones that aid the oppressors okay the aiders of the oppressors are those who aid them and those who give them medicine okay those who what give them medicine or gave them a pen and some of them even said the one that washes their clothes okay even to the point that says that the ones that aid them are their wives okay uh who are mentioned in the in the verse and it obviously presents a verse previously to this as well so as you just read okay that this is known just by giving someone a pen imagine <laughs> imagine a ruler okay be given a pen and he's oppressive you're aiding the oppressor if so imagine you're washing the clothes of a ruler again circumstances all of that that plays into the the situation as well but what i'm saying is that look at the position look how they look how they viewed this you know and you guys defended with your tongue you guys are aid, you're not you're not aiding the oppressors you are the oppressors okay according to the seller now we're going to present another book just to sort of tie all the statements in they're probably repeated but again i'm just showing emphasis we've got ihya'u ulum al-din by al-ghazali okay and, and then as you can see we've got uh, al-ghazali mentioned the same thing as sufyan al thawri that there's a valley in Jahannam, no one will reside in except the reciters who visit the rulers. And then he mentions Hudayfa, uh, that beware of uh, agreeing with Fitan. And he says, what is that? He says, um, the gates of the rulers, whoever enters upon them, uh, upon the ruler and says, and believes in his lies. And says, no, there's nothing in it. And then he mentions various statements. we got the one here by, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Sufyan, uh, uh, Sa'id ibn Musaib, the one that we read, whoever visits the ruler, whoever sees uh, a scholar visits frequently visiting the rulers and beware of him for he is a thief and this whole chapter um, you know kitab al-ilm also has this uh, uh, imam al-ghazali goes in so here you go we got ihya'u ulum al-deen by imam al-ghazali so as you can see on screen we've got the book tahdeeb uh, al-kamal fi asma'i rijal by hafid al-mizzi and he mentions now we're going back to sufyan al-thawri again he says that a man saw sufyan al-thawri okay a man saw sufyan al-thawri and he says, Ya Aba Abdullah, oh Aba Abdullah, you are carrying all of these gold, these dananir, these, these, this money. You're carrying all of this money. He said, Uskut. He goes, Be quiet. Shut your mouth. Falawla hadihi dananir. If it wasn't for this gold, if it wasn't for this money, the rulers will make us into their handkerchiefs. Okay? The rulers will make us into their handkerchiefs. SubhanAllah al <laughs> Look at that. He goes, look if you, he goes, shut your mouth. He goes, if this, we went for this gold that you can see, the rulers would have made us into their handkerchiefs, meaning that I earn. This, this gold is what I earn. I'm separate from the rulers. I don't want nothing to do with them. I'm going to earn my bread. I'm going to earn my living. You understand? And this is enough. But if it wasn't for this gold that I'm earning, that I'm surviving on, these rulers would make us into their bloody handkerchiefs. <laughs> Remember, the son of orders obeyed the rulers. They weren't critique. They never critiqued the rulers. Don't worry. We'll get to obviously time ruler or just ruler. This will be tied into that. Look at the evidence I'm presenting so far, and there's three parts to this. So look, I'm telling you, the English speaking world will be enlightened. 2021 is just going to be so much information, similar to 2020 and 2019. I did I did almost a year, a uh, half a year in 2019, and I did a full year in 2020. As you can see, we've got the book Tafsiru. Al-Bahr al-Muhit, okay? And it mentions the same statement, okay? The one that we just presented about, uh, the one before, sorry, about there's a valley uh, in Jahannam, no one resides in it apart from the reciters who visit the rulers. Listen to this now, subhanAllah. And this is talking about rulers. It mentions that Sufyan al-Thawri was asked about a tyrant, okay? That is close to death in a desert. Could he be given water? Listen to this. He goes, no. So they said to him, look, he might die. Let him die. All right. <laughs> okay. What do you think about that? Subhanallah, and this is talking about the rulers. Okay, this is talking about the rulers. So the authority was harsh with the rulers. But what do you? What if there's a tyrant? You know, that ruler in the desert dying of thirst. He goes, do we give him water? Because don't give him water. He goes, but he'll die. He goes, yeah, leave him. Let him die. 
well, you guys have played a good game. Honestly, you guys have played a very good game. I applaud you. Yeah, sorry, I applaud you. Shouldn't really be clapping, but you know, here you go. Just take one from me. So let's carry on. We've got the book Kitab, Jarh wa Ta'adil by Ibn Abi Hatim. Okay? And it mentions, to show you how stern Sufyan authority is, it says, Sami'atu Abdul Rahman, Yani Ibn Mahdi. Qala, ma Sami'atu Sufyan yusubbu ahadan bin al-Sultan. Qat. He says, that Ibn Mahdi said, I have never heard Sufyan insult any one of the rulers. Okay? I've never heard this. Absolutely, I've never heard this. Fi shiddatihi alayhim. Despite the fact he was harsh and he was strict with them. Let that sink in for a second. Sufyan al-Thawri never insulted the rulers. Okay? Never insulted them. Absolutely he didn't insult them. Despite the fact that he was severe against them. He was severe against the tyrant rulers. Okay? Sufyan al-Thawri. He was severe. Very severe against the tyrant rulers. But you guys, if we were to do what Sufyan al-Thawri did, oh! Innovators, especially one ruler anyway. Innovators, you know, the dogs of the hall for you. Uh, whoever sits next. You guys have played a massive charade. You have put the wool over our eyes. Unfortunately, these evidences would never be brought out because it needed to be researched and then translated into the English language. Regardless, my poor level of Arabic, as, as you like to call it, which I agree, it needs to be, impro it needs to be improved. But my poor level of Arabic, which is probably be between beginners and intermediate, just really probably even below intermediate, is enough for me to access these books and read it. And to expose your technicalities and your deceit and omitting evidences and interpolation and, and whatever else. That's enough for me. It's enough for me. al kashaf by Az-Zamakshari. Okay, don't worry. They're going to say, oh, hold on, you're causing them what? Tazili, don't worry about it. We're going to drown you in ignorance as well. Don't think, don't think I haven't come prepared. Okay, don't think I haven't come prepared. It mentions... Okay, that, um, the same thing of Sufyan, okay, so we've already presented numerous times that Sufyan said, Fi Jahannam wadin, that there's a, a valley in Jahannam that no one will reside in it except the one, the reciters that visit the rulers. And then he mentions Awza'i. Awza'i said, okay, subhanAllah adim, Awza'i said, there is nothing more hateful to Allah than a scholar visiting the rulers. Okay, Awza'i said this as well. And then he mentions Muhammad bin Maslama. He said, a fly sitting on an excrement is better than one knocking at the doors of these people, meaning the rule. And then he mentions uh, that, وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ دَعَ لِلظَّالِمِينَ بِالْبَقَاءِ That whoever wants or prays for a ruler to remain, that he loves or wishes Allah to be um, uh, disobeyed on the earth. And then he said that uh, Sufyan was asked regarding a tyrant, okay, that's on the verge of perishing uh, in the desert. Do we give him any water? And he said, no, don't give him. And they said he will die. He said, yeah, leave him, let him die. Okay? And obviously this is under the ayat, um, what's it called? وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Now you will say to me, hold on here, Hajji. Hold on here, son. Hold on, this is not right. This is not right. Okay, not right. Stop. Put your brakes on. Uh, you quoted uh, Az-Zamakshari, who was a Hanafi. Okay? He was a Hanafi, but he was upon I'tizal. And this tafsir is known. Al-Kashaf is known for uh, his sort of, you know, interpolations of obviously, you know, misquotations for his uh, creed of i'tizal. So what are you playing at, Hajji? How dare you use a Mu'tazali for evidence? Well, hold on, it's about 45 minutes of I haven't used a Mu'tazali. But if you've got a problem with that, let's now drown you in your sorrows. As you can see on screen, we've got the book, Seer A'lam al by Imam al dahabi Under the biography of Qatada, the Mufassir Qatada, he is an authority by consensus. Okay? But what, what, what happened to him? Okay? What happened to him? He was upon the belief of the Qadariya, meaning he uh, denied uh, the predestination. Okay? He denied uh, the predestination. And he says, Nasrullahu Afu, may Allah forgive him. Then he just goes on and basically says that, look, he's a great scholar. And may Allah forgive him for it. And any great scholar who's done great work, etc., uh, such a scholar should be pardoned. And, but Imam Dabi does go on to say, he says, Naam. He says, Of course, La naqtadi bihi fi bid'atihi. But we don't follow or we don't emulate his bid'ah or his mistakes. Now, Imam Qatada, uh, a great mufassir, uh, denied the Qadr. Okay? He was a person of the Qadriya. One known, ma'roof. He was a person of the Qadriya. But yeah, you take his tafsir. Okay? You take many of his tafsir. But he was a Qadariya. So do you reject his tafsir? And Imam Dahabi says, perhaps he made tawbah from it. But 
you know, perhaps we don't know. But he was upon the Qadariyah. And, you know, he mentions that, um, you know, uh, may Allah forgive him for it. Uh, but no one, dis- despite this, no one doubts his integrity, uprightness, etc. And basically, any scholar that does great work the way Qatada has. So if, if you have a problem with me quoting from uh, a Zamakshari in his Akashaf, okay, because we know he was upon it at then likewise, are you going to reject Qatada's reports as well? That is all over the tafsir. Are you going to reject that as well? So what I'm saying is, now let's carry on. I told you it's going to be a lengthy video. I've got here the book Al-Kaba'ir, okay, Al-Kaba'ir by Imam al-Dahabi. And under chapter 26, okay, um, we've got a statement, okay. And listen to this, Sufyan al-Thawri again, subhanAllah al It mentions that Ja'a rajulun khayatun ila Sufyan al-Thawri. That a tailor came to Sufyan al-Thawri, okay, Sufyan al-Thawri. And faqala inni rajulun, he said, I am a man. That tailors the clothes for the Sultan. Hal ana min a'wanu zalama? Am I the person that's aiding the oppressors? Fakala Sufyan, bal anta min zalama and fusihim. But in fact, you are from the oppressors themselves. Here's Al Kabair, okay, by Imam al Dahabi. So just to show you, okay, just to show you, okay, oh, this is what I've quoted thus far. And I've quoted many PDFs as well, okay? That's what I've quoted. So this video is lengthy, okay? This video is lengthy. So that's the end of the video. I know it's lengthy. I know it's gone into it in, 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 in depth. And, you know, I don't want to drag this on too much, uh, you know, the ending conclusion. But I just want to emphasize on the point that I made earlier at the start of the video, and it may have been missed because it's, it's so lengthy, is that... If you are going to take those statements of the Salaf when it deals with or discusses Bid'ah and the innovators and you know they were harsh against the innovators and you know there was context as I've explained it before but I want to add here and now is that now we've presented this evidence regarding visiting the rulers and aiding the rulers and how a person who you know just basically uh, handles their affairs or even communicates with them or anything of the sort obviously in that regard I can't remember what they were then you are not from well, aiding the Zalama you are the Zalama the one that washes your clothes the one that gives you food the one that cuts your hair he's aiding the oppressor which is you <laughs> which is you by being the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make dua for me uh, you know I hope you enjoyed the video share it like subscribe and uh, don't forget to pray for your brother bro Haji I love you all for the sake of Allah. Wa salam ala biya Muhammad. Kam maratin na'asaf al-aneen bidakhili Kam maratin qaddaka qalbi min asah Nuhanta wa kam kareh tu musabah Lakin ra'aytu khayra yuskabu fi ana Kam maratin qaddiktu min a'idam al-bala Basharun wa shaytanun yuhasiruni ama Kam maratin qad adlama darbu duhan وتحدر الدمع وضاقت برؤى كم مرة عصفت أنكين بداخلي كم مرة قلقك كلبي من أساه محلتها وكم كرهت 